Hello there everyone and happy 2021. My name is Chris Unwin and I am a Redgate Solution Engineer. Now today I'm going to be talking you through something just that little bit different, something that we don't talk about a, hu uh, a huge amount uh, and that is using Redgate SQL change automation with GitLab. Now much of the time you see myself and some of the other solution engineers doing demonstrations of SQL change automation and our tools of choice will often be things like Azure DevOps or Jenkins, Bamboo, Team City. And this is primarily because Redgate provides plugins for those solutions. But regardless, it doesn't matter really what continuous integration and delivery system you want to use, whether that be GitLab or others that I don't know of, or even just coding out your pipeline too. And of course, using the Redgate SQL change automation, PowerShell commandlets, anything is possible. So today I'm going to walk you through what a setup of change automation would look like on a very small scale with GitLab. Now, hopefully you can see my screen here. So this is my own personal repository in GitLab. As you can see, a very serious repository for the uh, doggos, our cool database. Now, uh, effectively, all I did with GitLab was signed up and created a new project. As you can see over here on the left-hand side, we've got our doggos are cool DB project. We've got our repo, our CI, CD, et sections over here. And we'll have a look at those in just a moment. Now, when I created the new repository, I then cloned it down onto my local machine. And as you can see here, under my C drive, I have C working folders, my GitLab example, and the doggos are cool locations. So this is where all of my changes are going to be recorded to. Now, effectively, all I did for this was I set up a SQL change automation project in SQL Server Management Studio. If you haven't done that before or you don't know how to set up a SQL change automation project, go ahead and check out Redgate University. Uh, you can find that on the Redgate hub. Go to the Redgate website, red-gate.com um, forward slash hub, and you'll be able to find the university there. And that will walk you through all of the steps you need to get set up with a change automation migrations project. So I'm here in Management Studio with my SQL change automation, Doggos Are Cool DB project, which I have linked to my Doggos Are Cool Dev Chris database. Of course, this is a Redgate SQL clone. Now there's just a few very small uh, kind of resources on here, some, some objects for us to play around with, um, basic bare bones schema. So I've got blogs, contacts, etc. Now, when I created this project, I then committed those through the native version control integration into that local repository, and then of course, pushed them up to GitLab. Thus, we can actually go ahead and check in our repository. Hopefully we should be able to see, there we are, the doggos are called DB. And there's our migrations, pre and post deployment scripts, programmable objects, provisioning and our schema model as well. And there's the uh, the all important doggos are called DB SQL branch. Now, once you've got these changes into GitLab and that's fairly straightforward to do from within the Redgate tools, how do we then go about building and deploying these changes? Well, because Redgate doesn't offer a plugin for GitLab, this is where we're going to need to make use of the PowerShell components. So I have, uh, I've actually set this up um, locally on my machine. The first step I needed to do, uh, to do that with was um, to set up a GitLab runner. So a GitLab runner is similar to an Azure DevOps agent or a uh, uh, Jenkins slave or a bamboo agent. There's a ton of different uh, types of agent out there. This is exactly the same. A GitLab runner is just something that we can pull down locally that will allow us to pick exactly what machine these processes are running on. Now, if I was doing the build and deployment against other servers, for instance, I might have a build server where I install that runner, which then I install the Redgate SQL change automation components on. In this example, because I'm just using one machine, I've got the GitLab runner and the SQL change automation PowerShell components installed on my machine. And you can pull those down just by installing the Redgate SQL tool belt. 
So I've got all of that set up. What does the build and deployment actually look like? Well, the way that we actually tell uh, GitLab how we would like to carry out our build and deployment is by using a YAML file. Surprise, surprise. Now, the YAML pipeline for uh, GitLab looks very similar to lots of other different uh, YAML files for other CI CD vendors. In this particular case, I have three specific stages, uh, database build, create release, deploy to integration. So the first step is, of course, we have to build the database from our SQL proj file. We have to build everything from the ground up. So we've got build, stage, database build, script, and this is where we're now using that particular uh, PowerShell script. So you'll notice I've got the tag SQL set. That is because we're denoting the GitLab runner that we'll be running on because my runner has that tag SQL. Now the script, all we've got here are effectively just a bunch of um, PowerShell commandlets, part of that Redgate tool belt uh, that are now running the build of the database. So effectively we're using some environment variables initially to set our project directory. So where is GitLab actually copying the files down to for the runner, in which case it's our CI project directory we can see that we're then setting the project file itself. So we're assigning the environment variable to the project path, and then we're using the project path to get the project itself. We then got a little echo statement that's saying, hey, I'm gonna build your project for you. And then all we're doing is assigning to the validated project variable a the output of this database build. So in this case, We've got invoke database build, and then we're providing a temporary database server. So in this case, my data source is my machine, my laptop. And I this is the um, default instance of SQL Server on that machine that I'm going to be building against. Um, with that success, obviously, that validated project is then going to generate us a new build artifact, a new get package that we're going to use for deployment. And then we're going to just export that artifact to our export location. So in this case, in our project directory, we have an export location. So we're going to spit out that NuGet package. The artifacts themselves obviously expire in a week because I don't want to be holding on to lots and lots of artifacts. Now the next stage is the create release stage and you'll notice that we've got the stage and the tag again and then the script this time ever so slightly different. We are then connecting to our, uh, to our server instance. We're then actually building an artifact from that. So in this case, you'll see we've got build artifact, project directory, and we're picking up that NuGet package and then using that to deploy to our target. So in this case, we're going to be deploying to our uh, doggos, our cool um, integration database. So the next stage after that is actually the deployment to integration. So we're going to create a connection to our uh, target. We're then gonna go ahead and obviously run that. And that's going to allow us to deploy our database artifact, release artifact, to that particular database. Now that all sounds quite complicated, but realistically it boils down to three main points. We build the database, we then uh, create a release artifact using that new get package from the build. That obviously tells us what we're going to deploy. And then of course we go ahead and release it. Now, once you've got these three very straightforward steps in your YAML file, all you then have to do is commit your changes from uh, SQL Server Management Studio through SQL Change Automation and update your project. That should show in the repository. And again, if you're adding your uh, GitLab YAML file, you should actually notice that it defines the stages based on your YAML file. So you shouldn't have to set anything up in the uh, GitLab user interface itself. 
Now let's look at my most recent uh, build and deployment. So here you'll see we've got that build, create, release and integration. If we take a look at the build itself, you'll notice the code there actually running. So we are running on um, PSELT Chris U, that's me. It's then reinitializing um, Git repositories, it's removing the export, and then down here is the invoke database build. That has validated our schema successfully. It's then exporting our artifact. And obviously this is just very specific to this artifact and this build. In this particular case, we're uploading it to, there we go, doggos are cool, dot database, and then we've got uh, the version and the build ID on the NuGet package. We go back to the pipeline. We should then be able to see that we've got the create release artifact. There we go. So what this is doing is it's generating the patch script from our files in version control to our target, that being the integration database. Now, in this case, that's then generating me uh, a database deployment resource. And I have a couple of database deployment resources available here on my machine. Like so. So the release artifacts are being output here. And much like you'll know, even though we're using the PowerShell commandlets, we're still able to output those SQL change automation uh, reports that you know and love. Uh, we've got the changes.html file here. Uh, as you can see, I added a new stored procedure called DBO hello there. And DBO hello there has been picked up as a change to be deployed. And we can even see the change script that's been output here, the targeted change script. And we can, again, we can view that in our release artifact. Of course, once this has all been generated, it's just a case of going back and, uh, and actually carrying out the deployment. You take that file and you deploy it to integration. You can, of course, extend this. You can add additional jobs to your YAML file. It's entirely up to you. And then it's gone ahead and succeeded. It's executed that migration. One migration deployed successfully. And then that's it. We've carried out our build and we've carried out our deployment using GitLab, using the Redgate SQL Change Automation PowerShell components. How did I do all of this? Well, it's very straightforward and very simple. The first thing I used was the documentation site at the Redgate website, documentation.red-gate.com. If you go to SQL Change Automation, you will actually find under reference the full PowerShell commandlet reference, all of your different options, as well as some worked examples. If you would also like to um, take a look at my YAML file or anything that I've done here, you'll also find it on my blog, uh, plantbasedsql.com. And if you just search for GitLab, obviously that'll be the first one that comes up. For now though, Happy building, happy deploying, and good luck with whichever CI CD system you decide to use with the Redgate capabilities. Thanks for stopping by.